I am Barry Cranford. Uh, I'm the founder of the Fractional Consultant Community, uh, which is the one that we're, we're all in here, uh, and the uh, director of RecWorks uh, Tech Recruitment Firm. Uh, so we do a bunch of work around trying to find where the gaps exist, where the gaps are in the industry, uh, and then plugging those gaps with communities, with events, with initiatives, and that kind of thing as a way to build relationships through the communities to, um, uh, yeah, to help spread the word of the, the recruitment work that we do. Um, but our work with this fractional group has just led to uh, no end of interesting people and interesting things that are going on uh, around the world and, and um, various different things that can, uh, that can help people. Uh, recently uh, came to meet Zed, um, who I, I know is uh, Zaria, but I only know you as Zed now and that's it. That's fine. Um, and, uh, and, and Zed introduced me to Mike um, and they introduced this concept of, of uh, peer forums. And, um, and it was such a, an interesting thing um, that we've decided to club together and, and, and do something here. Uh, and, and yeah, so we, we put this together to, to help people understand what this whole thing's all about, because it was a new concept to me. Uh, and so, yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, so we'll go through a few questions, we'll introduce um, Zed, or we'll give a chance for Zed and Mike to introduce themselves. And then we'll go through some questions. But if you've got any questions along the way, wave your hands furiously or just interrupt, put something on the chat, uh, anything that you want to do. This is ultimately uh, for, for you to understand what these things are all about. It, as I say, it was a new concept to me. So if, if there's anything you want to know about it, then um, uh, yeah, please, please leave a message. Um, but with that, I'll hand over to Zed then, if you can just um, uh, give a few words about yourself, Zed, and then we'll crack on from there. Sure. Thanks, Barry. Uh, hello, everybody. I, I'm really hoping that we uh, don't bore you during this hour and give you something that really does uh, change your life, but that's a, that's a high bar, uh, Barry. Uh, we'll try and meet it as much as we can. Uh, my name is Zaria Vakil. I'm I'm very commonly known as Zed, and I'd be very happy for any uh, any of you to address me as Zed. Um, I uh, uh, just give you a bit of background, and then then we can sort of segue to the, what we're here for today. Uh, I started my life very traditionally in the '80s as a multinational corporate guy, and worked in very large, uh, fast-moving subsidiaries of uh, multinationals like BAT uh, and then GKM, the engineering company. Moved from there to um, uh, what we then called investment management, but actually uh, it morphed into quite a sizable venture capital uh, company. And I worked for and with my partners in that venture capital company for about 14 years, after which I decided that I'd like to spin out something of my own, which I did, and my colleagues funded me, which was also very nice. And that led me to a few years running my own business, Cool Worksource, which is still my brand. And um, Worksource was uh, originally set up to provide uh, outsourced HR uh, transactional services to SMEs in the UK. Uh, that um, came to quite a sudden halt uh, towards the end of the um, the 2010s because a client of mine made me an offer I couldn't refuse on a junk ship. Uh, sold my clients but not my brand and worked in corporate again for about six years um, respectively in insurance claims outsourcing uh, private healthcare and then private banking and I was in private banking at the time of the crash that led me very quickly to a portfolio career with people asking me to come into their companies and uh, as a gun for hire if you like as an interim and fractional so I've been doing it for a long time since 2009 and that took me right up to the pandemic when I slightly pivoted and decided that in the D5 of my life, decade five of working, that I would do something different and try and match my passionate purpose, which is as a servant leader, and start working with SMEs again uh, and startups and scale ups and work towards finding a role that not only satisfied my, my passionate purpose, which was to help and make a difference in other businesses, but also to engender, I guess, a quality of life that I was looking for, which I think a lot of you guys will be looking for, which is to have more time, be, be available for my family, for my friends, for my community, in whichever way that, that happens. And that led me uh, also uh, through Mike's introduction, and I'll hand over to Mike in a minute, to uh, REF, which used to be Renaissance Executive Forums. It's now uh, an acronym, as, as is always the way with these companies. Uh, it is now called REF. There's a REF Global Organization, which I'll let Mike talk to you about. And then perhaps Mike, one of us will come back to the, 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 the tip of the spear here, which is what we're doing with Portfolio Peer Forums. Mike? 
Yeah, hello everybody. Uh, nothing more I love to do than hang out with portfolio professionals or, or fractional consultants like yourself. Um, Mike Richardson, English originally, excuse my American twang. I've been in the States now for 25 years. I'm in Southern California in a wine district called Temecula Valley, which is in the triangulation between Los Angeles, San Diego, and Palm Springs. Uh, came here in 1999 with my family when I was running the aerospace division of a British public company you've probably never heard of called Spirant. I made a number of acquisitions over here and was coming here every other week. So at a certain point, I decided to move here on a four-year work permit, managed to get my green card, and then became a citizen. Before that, I did the classic thing in the 80s of an MBA at London Business School. And before that, I was in the oil and gas business as a petroleum engineer. And then uh, if you remember in the 2000, 2001, uh, the markets crashed, the dot-com bubble came to a grinding halt, uh, the technology boom uh, was over, and then 9-11 happened. And the commercial aviation business, which was the backbone of my division, was in terrible shape post 9-11. Uh, but I got my green card two months before 9-11, so I was very lucky. So I decided to uh, go independent and do my own thing and become what we latterly have called a portfolio professional pursuing a portfolio career, including a fractional element. I'm, I'm, I specialize in agility, so I, I'm sometimes a fractional chief agility officer, uh, but I facilitate and I coach and I mentor and I speak and I, and I, uh, and I run peer forums. And I've been doing that for 20 years. Uh, and 20 years ago, uh, I ran into one of the world leading organizations that I worked with for 15 years called Vistage. You may have heard of them. Uh, they used to be called Tech, the executive committee. They rebranded themselves Vistage in the mid 2000s. Uh, they happened to have a head office right here in San Diego, their global head office. I became a Vistage chair and a Vistage speaker uh, for 15 years. And I ran four groups in the San Diego area, two groups of CEOs and two groups of uh, senior executives. Uh, and I was also a speaker uh, with Vistage, and I spoke to 400 groups around the country and around the world, many times in the UK and Australia and other places. And uh, I did that for 15 years, and I had members who were with me for 15 years because they just loved it. And it was a place like no other uh, that was so rare and precious. And this essence, and I know, Barry, you'll, you'll come in here with questions and so leap on in as you would like to. But the essence of a peer forum, everybody, is it is a monthly meeting of 12 to 15 members uh, in the case of a CEO group, only CEOs. In the case of senior executives, only senior executives. In the case of what we've come to call, and Zed will weigh in here as well, a portfolio peer forum, only portfolio professionals or fractional consultants um, who get together uh, once a month, typically physically, but in our case here, virtually, no competitors in the room, so no conflict of interest whatsoever. There's only one kind of seat in each category, totally confidential, about business, professional, personal, and life, everything. Because as we know, having done this for 20 years, and Zed for 15, I think it is, and you for however many years you've been doing this, uh, this journey that we're on is a tangled web, isn't it, of business, professional, personal life. It's it's inseparable. And yes, we try to untangle the strands, and that's a lot of the work that we do. Uh, and it it's these things are sometimes called peer groups, peer forums, mastermind groups, um, uh, other labels perhaps that you've come across. Zed, what would you add into the mix there? Yes, thanks. That's really interesting. Uh, and we'll talk a bit more about um, peer forums in a minute. But I think what I should say to you is that uh, I, having arrived at a um, an innovative new networking style uh, through through Mike's introduction, decided that I would actually go the full hog. And I certified as a ref forum leader uh, early last year so that I could run the live forums, as has been the case for decades uh, with REF and also with other uh, leading um, 
uh, corporate based um, uh, um, uh, forum companies. And as a result of that, I then started wondering because of my personal uh, needs and the needs of all my community, why should something so brilliant be exclusive to essentially a corporate uh, community and maybe uh, very successful entrepreneurs who can pay for it uh, through their um, through their companies. And I turned to Mike and I, I put to him that I thought there was something here that we could do virtually. Mike agreed and that was the um, yeah. beginning of what we are now calling Portfolio Peer Forums. And uh, I'll double down on what uh, Mike spoke to you about a minute ago, which was these are virtual forums. We take all the best parts and most of the parts of a live forum and bring it to a new community, making it much more accessible and really leveraging this collective intelligence that's become so much the power of these peer groups. And, and frankly, if on a personal basis, it's taken me away from that solopreneur, uh, portfolio professional, fractional executive isolation that you feel so strongly. And, and having something monthly, which is dynamic, it's regular, and it's a pathway from that isolation has made it a joy to be able to start introducing to my tribe, which is portfolio professionals, fractional consultants, and, and so on. Mike, yeah, want- perhaps just to just to finish off the story, and then we'll we'll let you weigh in, Barry, with a, with some questions and whatever Q and A we want to handle from the from the group here. So I I was with this for fifteen years. I had itchy feet, and uh, I wanted to go back and run a global company again as a sort of real time agility case study uh, sort of capstone experience on my career. Uh, and so something crossed my path in twenty eighteen, which I went and did for for three years. And as I pivoted back from that, I didn't want to jump back in with Vistage again. I, I went looking for who's on the leading edge of what's next with peer forums. And two of my longtime Vistage members who loved it so much, their, Mark was in it 12 years, Susan was in it 10 years. When I was away for those three years, they acquired the San Diego franchise of Ref. As, as Zed said previously, Renaissance Executive Forums, uh, now rebranded to REF, REF. Uh, this is our 30th year anniversary. We've been doing this for 30 years. This is, you've been doing it for about 70 years. YPO, Young Presidents Organization, has been doing it for, I think, 50 or 60 years. Mm-hmm. When I started doing it 20 years ago, nobody had ever heard of it. It was amazing. Even though it had been around for 50 years already when I started 20 years ago, nobody had ever heard of it. I'd never heard of it. I'd been a serial... CEO, executive, then CEO, then divisional CEO. I'd never heard of it. And the head office were right here in my backyard. Um, so it's still a relatively well-kept secret even today. It's a wonderful thing when we have been prototyping uh, this virtual forum for portfolio professionals, fractional professionals. Uh, we did a 12-week prototype late last year with eight participants, they just loved it. We've been doing tasters. We'll talk about tasters uh, and how you might sign up for one of those later on. Uh, pretty much every week for the la- for all year this year. And, and, and these are sort of one-off experiences where people can come and get a taste of what we're talking about. And there, there are maybe 10 or 20% of people that have had a peer forum experience before but 80% have not. And they're just blown away by mm. the power and transparency and trust and bond and, and depth of engagement that occurs. And um, one of the reasons why we started this, you know, we're, we're as you saw from our bios, we're, we're both part of uh, another community called the Portfolio Collective. Um, which is where we met. And like many community organizations, present company excluded, I'm sure, that's my that's my insurance policy here. Um, but like many communities, if we're not careful, the engagement is rather fleeting, it's rather shallow, and it's rather limited. Uh, we sort of skim along the surface. 
And consequently, if we're not careful, um, we, we're not getting the depth of engagement and the, the heights of collective intelligence. Our, our mantra in REF is leaders powered by collective intelligence. And so this is the, this, uh, a peer forum is the exact opposite. It's a very deep, ongoing, very comprehensive engagement between you know, 12 to 15 non-competitive peers in a confidential environment. Everything that gets talked here stays here um, and, and potentially you know, is, is going on, not forever, but in a, on an indefinite basis. Like I said, I had members with me for 15 years, 12 years, 10 years, eight years. Um, and we really helped each other go on that journey. So, Barry, what what else would you what would you like to know on behalf of your uh, group here? Mm, yeah. So, so why we've done this, right? Why we've kicked this off? Why we've uh, asked Zed and Mike to to get involved? Um, so, Chelsea and I have talked often in the past about these things, like the the idea of running cohort driven groups in some way is something that we've looked at. We obviously run a bunch of different communities. Um, and the fractional community is one that we thought this would be an awesome thing to do if we could just get people together in cohorts. And we've talked about it so many times and just never actually done anything, never really fully understood how to do it, how to make it work and, and, and that kind of thing. Um, and I've also uh, personally been in a few mastermind groups, as I'm sure many of you might, might have been, where I've kind of gone somewhere for an hour or two hours and we've talked about problems and we've done this kind of thing. And I've left thinking... I, you know, it, was, it was okay. I, I hope other people got something out of it. I got a little bit out of it, but never sort of felt like mind blown, right? So it's been this kind of um, that for us. Uh, and then so I started speaking to Zed and I was like, oh, this is interesting. This is kind of sounds like what we've wanted to do. And then the more I've spoken to Zed and Mike, and the more I've understood what this actually is, <clears throat> it's just been like, yeah, we're not going to do our own thing of this because we're not going to do it to this kind of level. Um, so I wonder if Mike, you could like this, what you did to me when, when we spoke, you spoke about all the, um, how an in-person peer forum works, like what would happen. Um, and it kind of showed then the difference between what a, a proper one does and, and what kind of maybe I've been involved in, I've seen, or we talked about doing, and then that difference. And then that kind of, I think can segue into what we're hoping to do within the, the, the FCC and, and what it might look like. Um, yeah, you, you want me to take that first, Zed, and then you weigh in afterwards? Yeah, go ahead. I think it's worth knowing what happens in life forums and how we yeah. use that, if you like. I'd probably stay away from proper and not proper, but, but yeah. we'll get yeah. to that. Uh, it, it's it's very much uh, its own thing. But yeah, go, go ahead, Mike, and then I'll... Yeah, I'll, so, I'll you know, <clears throat> I'll speak about REF. I could equally speak about Vistage and Young Presidents Organization. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have some differences to our model. Um, uh, we've been doing this 30 years, as I said. We're in 20 countries now. Uh, we just opened in London, and uh, we are springboarding from London into northwestern Europe. We're already in Spain. We've been in Spain for ten years. We're 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 obviously the USA and Canada is our biggest mar single market. We're pretty much in every country in Latin America, hence the connection with Spain, um, <clears throat> and and we'll be moving into Europe from the north and the south, and then Asia Pacific. Um, so we have. Uh, members going to physical face-to-face -face forums in all of those different places and they'll show up for half a day four or five hours physically locally uh, and um, they'll go through the, the 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 different elements of the meeting there'll be some warm-up and sign in and check in and all of that kind of stuff and then there are three pillars to the meeting there's what we call an educational component with a with an expert speaker for an hour there's uh, what we call the round table component where we do a leadership development curriculum journey that we compound over time, including with a 360 degree, you know, survey once a year, that kind of stuff. And then the core of the core of the core, the third pillar is what we call the case. And it's essentially issue processing. And this is where uh, a member uh, will bring a framed and prepared case. We will have met with the member beforehand, virtually by Zoom, to frame up the case and prepare a simple, you know, template PowerPoint. Um, and then they they bring that to the group, the physical face-to-face -face group, and we facilitate them through that. It typically takes an hour. 
And in the first five or 10 minutes, we facilitate them sharing the template and then we open it up to clarifying questions and and then we quiet the member and we give them input and feedback and suggestions and stories and recommendations. And then we turn back to them and see what lands with them and, and other things in the mix to make that a very magical process, uh, which where they feel sheltered and protected and safe. Um, I think uh, I think I forget who it was, but I think it was you, Michelle. You said the normal cut and thrust of, of LinkedIn and uh, one of our members in the in the prototype forum that we did for 12 weeks, he said, you know, everywhere else I go, it's a free for all. Yeah. It's not safe at all. I'm going to get uh, it, no matter how hard people try, you know, they shoot from the hip and I feel belittled. I feel diminished and I feel frankly disrespected in some cases. Right. If 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 people are sort of taking pot shots at me, say, yeah, yeah, I know that. Yeah, I know that. I know that. So we do the exact exact opposite. We protect and shelter uh, and cocoon the member that's bringing uh, the case so they feel heard, they feel understood, they feel respected, they feel uplifted. And, and, and then as they, as, and that prepares them to hear and absorb and, and let in uh, the, the input that they get. We did this, I did this in Santa Fe, New Mexico uh, about two months ago. Uh, for for a client, I did a retreat, and I encouraged them to tee it up as a sort of peer forum experience. Even though we had a few more people, we had thirty people in this case. But you you know, if you know what you're doing, you can still do it with that many people. And we had a lady, very accomplished lady. She'd been with that organization for about ten years, and she volunteered to do the case we did two cases we had, I had two mornings to work with we did one case each morning and then the second morning i had chance that evening to frame it and prepare it and it would be the second time they'd been through the process but this first lady on the first morning i revealed the process and worked the process simultaneously and educated people the whole 30 people and her how to go through the process 45 minutes later i turned to her and i asked her what was it like to bring an issue like that to a group like this, and unprompted by me, she said, I wish I had this five years ago. I've not had this quantity and quality of trusted, care, care, caring, insightful input for like this for the five or 10 years that I've been in this organization. So it, when it's done, when the conditions are created, the magic happens. And, and in the cut and thrust or the free-for-all of everything else that we discover, it typically doesn't. And actually, the opposite can easily happen where we didn't get a collateral benefit, we got collateral damage if we're not careful. So that's what typically happens in a, in a physical form. And now, Zed, do you want to describe what yeah. happens in a yeah. virtual form? Wow. Uh, pretty much all of that, apart from we, we don't do retreats and uh, all the rest of it, but that's uh, just to remind you and double down on the, the, the logistics, two hours a month where you come together in a regular group. The members don't change. They remain static. There, there may be um, some comings and goings, but essentially it's the same group that starts bonding very, very strongly in a circle of trust. And what we've done in the Portfolio Peer Forum is taken all those best bits. And, it, you know, probably, Mike, even as little as 10 years ago, pre-pandemic, to have tried to suggest that there was a way of running peer forums virtually, people would probably have looked at you with two heads and said, no way is that gonna work. Nowadays, we are, we are so used to, uh, I have a slide which almost looks identical to the screen that we have right now in front of you, where we are coming together as a bonded group, sharing everything, it sounds, ominous but actually it took my breath away during our uh, trial forum how candid people were about their business issues their personal issues their professional issues it was actually quite humbling and i should tell you that the big difference between portfolio peer forums mm -hmm. and the live forums is something i'm very proud about because you'll remember i talked about my sense of community my sense of wanting to make a difference well Real um, live portfolio peer forums tend to be targeted to corporates and um, 
large, uh, uh, large and successful entrepreneur-led uh, companies, and they tend to be relatively expensive. Um, that lack of inclusion bothered me. Uh, the fact that, that that also contributed to a lack of diversity. And moreover, because it's a physical forum, there's a lack of access, uh, both physically and by diversity. And all of those things really matter to me and I think matter to a lot of us who've taken the step away from corporate life and gone into a fractional uh, role. So it's really important that I say to you that all of those ed uh, elements, the educational element, the guest speakers, uh, the case methodology and so on is all done within the portfolio peer forum. And not only that, we also uh, add value to it by ensuring that the person who is going to be presenting their case is also prepped by Mike and I or one of us so that they frame their case before the month, the, the, the monthly meeting in order to extract the best advice that they can extract from that group, because They've got this one hour to talk to their board, if you like, their forum, to give them the best advice possible. So framing the case becomes quite a big part of the monthly gathering. And that happens between the members presenting and us uh, so that we can get that right. And we yeah. also, um, we also um, make sure that there is this curriculum, as, as Mike uh, mentioned, that it effect effectively emerges from what we hear are the needs of the group that have some common thread. And uh, that, that's, a, that's an important um, value proposition that we have discovered has provided a huge amount of added value, both in terms of in the meeting and offline where we've created private groups, we've created WhatsApp, uh, WhatsApp groups and channels so that people can share during the month and finally, Mike, I think the thing that you introduced uh, in our inaugural forum, we have a we have a portfolio peer forum that has, has started. Uh, we've introduced the concept of tiger groups that can form at the request of any one of the members during the month and during meetings. So, yeah, we 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 would uh, do that physically. We would do that physically as well, where you know yes. we we've got this monthly cadence. And members are members are bringing issues, cases, you know, on a monthly basis. Uh, but if if a member blows the whistle and says, "Oh my gosh, this happened yesterday, and I've I, I need help now," we would form a physical tiger team. Okay, uh, what quorum of people? Not everybody, but what quorum of people can we get that will show up at your place Friday at three o'clock? You 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 supply the pizza. We'll supply the insight and the help, um, and of course, virtually, that's so that's even more doable, right? Okay, we you need help right now. Great, let's do something tomorrow. What quorum can we get? Let's spend an hour together. Let's process the case. Uh, you, you're familiar with the case flow, so you're you're halfway there in framing it up and preparing it. Let's just finish it off. Great, let's go. The only other thing I would just add on top is um, Barry, we. We listened to one of your previous uh, sessions here. I think it was the last one, actually, where you they were talking about the concept of having a personal advisory board of some description for fractional consultants or portfolio professionals. And that that is a phrase that we use a lot, that a peer forum is often called a peer advisory board or a personal advisory yeah. board that is totally confidential, no conflict of interest, totally safe, um, and is here to help you in this journey we call life. <laughs> the business part of it, the professional part of it, the personal part of it, the life part of it. And we evolved together a success model that isn't a one-size-fits-all model. We let the model emerge from the forum and 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 take shape and and then it becomes a, a lens a filter through which we can process cases and and support each other uh, in in this sort of 1.0 2.0 3.0 journey that we're trying to go on of our success not just in business but also in life we we like to talk about prosperity a sense of prosperity as some integration of success and happiness financially and non-financially you know, revolving around your passionate purpose 
uh, your sense of passionate purpose as that as that evolves. So back to you, Barry. Great stuff. Thanks both. Um, okay, so moving this on to the FCC and fractional specifically, how do you see this benefiting? Um, you know, if, if let's say the people on this this group today or some of the others that are listening afterwards wanted to get involved, how do you see it unfolding, and how do you see the, the main benefits from someone in a uh, in a fractional position? Yeah. Shall I take that one first? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, maybe a little anecdote will help because um, I am more recent to this uh, than than Mike you know, in terms of peer forums, and certainly over the last uh, nearly a year now on on working on this project, what I started off thinking was a nice idea has become very personal, and the reason it's become personal is because if if we all understand now what portfolio peer forums are, this virtual group that meets monthly uh, with a, a kind of regular uh, membership, that it is a hall of mirrors. And to a certain extent, all of us can take some learnings from each one of us is cases uh, during that particular month's case. How I would see it working in FCC is very much how we've launched it uh, already, that we invite folks like you uh, and the, the rest of the community to come and see what it's like. It is very hard to describe and we have this time and time again in our testimonials during our tasters, which is, I'm glad I took the taster because now I really know what it's like. And my story along this line was as a certified forum leader, I started making copious notes like this. Sorry, I still use a notebook. About what I needed to do about my business and about my personal life and my career direction and my success framework. So much so that I'm now developing tools and developing workshops to think to think of myself, we need so much help in this area. And it's the it's the old saying, you don't know what you don't know. And I think so much as, of that has come about, both through the educational component and curriculum, but also through listening and, and uh, deliberating over other people's cases. Logistically, uh, I think we, we, we've described uh, what we do. Um, we expect that um, the, the, you know members will stay indefinitely, but there's no contract. The contract is a confidentiality agreement of two thirds of a page, which says I shall keep secret everything I hear at the at forum for myself and other members, sign on the dotted line and we're away. If you want to stop coming, you stop coming. However, like a good football team selection, we want the right players in that group. And we also want the commitment that you're starting this with the intention of carrying on, because it's very disruptive, of course, to a group that we've now said is regular and bonded if we have too much movement. We're going to always have some, but but not too much. Uh, Mike, yeah. do you want to add yeah, on that? Yeah, and I think uh, just to throw on, on the top of that, maybe you do these these kinds of things as well, Barry, but um, the portfolio collective that Zed and I are part of did a survey of its membership recently and amongst many other things, of course, surfaced, you know, what what are the attributes of pursuing a portfolio career that are most challenging? And the top three things are it's hard, it's complex, and it's lonely. Hmm. And uh, you all experience that yourself with your own journey as a fractional and or portfolio professional. It, it is hard to figure it out and, and to find the groove and to to get that snowball effect of success rolling and keeping it rolling and, and preventing it from sort of melting, you know, halfway up the curve. Uh, it is complex, right? We're juggling a lot of things. We're, we're, it's, a, it's a brain tease trying to figure out how, what, what our niche is, what we're offering, how we, how we price and all of those kinds of things. And it is very lonely, even though we show up to networking things here and there, right? It doesn't, you know, we don't necessarily feel like we have people walking in our shoes, you know, on a regular basis who, who really are putting their life, their business, their issues on hold for an hour to focus on you and yours. Mm. Give you the very, very, very best that I've got for an hour, mm. just focused on you and your journey. And somebody said it earlier, the, the beauty 
of why this is so powerful and, and the, the members that we look for that make for really high functioning peer forms are the kind of members that want to give and get. That's where the power comes from. We, 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 we're looking for members who obviously can get from this. They can get uh, help, support, insight, inspiration, energy, uh, uh, what we call care, care frontation, right? Um, I'm going to confront you. We're going to confront you directly, right between the eyes, unsugarcoated, because I care enough to take the risk. I care about you, your future, your family, your prosperity, financially and non-financially, your success and your happiness, your pursuit of your passionate purpose. I care enough about that to take the risk with you. I'll do it carefully. And we coach you on how to do that. But I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat stuff. And that is so rare and so precious uh, that that we typically can't get anywhere else. And so it's a, it's really an antidote to the fact that this journey that we're all on, fractional portfolio, is hard, complex, and lonely. This is an antidote to that. And and Barry, if I may quickly, and, and then I'll stop talking. Um, the not quoting me or us, I'm quoting the last speakers from um uh carl titchler's um forum uh, or, or um fireside uh i think it was a few weeks ago uh, that i listened to a recording of and he talked about and and garrett mears who was with him i found the page by the way in my famous notebook and, and fergus talked about the the other value propositions the the self-reflection the structure the the pathway away from loneliness and a, a personal Check-in quotes. These are all quotes. Um, the fact that Gary uh, Garrett Mears talked about it being somewhere where he could feel that he fitted and that it's where exactly I want to stand. And I thought those were an amazing uh, number of quotations there that helped me to, um, I, I, I guess, um, crystallize in my own head why it is we're doing these things because there is a need. These funny, squiggly careers that we have now need this kind of support, this kind of uh, forum uh, in order to make them work and to be to be successful. Otherwise, we sit at home in our pants and scratch our heads and one wonder why our businesses are not working, or some of us do, uh, anyway. And perhaps uh, I'll uh, just double down. I just noticed the, the question in the chat uh, about which which it sounds like we've at least partially answered, but I think let's try to give it a full answer because we get asked this a lot. How how is this different from in this case a fractional board or board of board governance board or board of advisors? Uh, we often get asked how is this different from networking, consulting, coaching, training, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I like to draw a Venn diagram of all of those different things. And and then in the space in the middle, put peer forum. Uh, it's it's got elements of all of those different things, uh, but a peer forum or a peer group or a peer advisory board is a different category of thing. And of course, the difference between a, a board of advisors, I'm also with another organization called the Advisory Board Center. So so I'm I'm very uh, very familiar with best practices around boards of advisors for companies and corporates many corporates despite having you know very rigorous governance boards also have advisory boards to help supplement their collective intelligence but of course a, a, a corporate advisory board or or a private company advisory board is in service of one company uh, whereas in this case we're in service of 12 to 15 different companies, if you like, in the case of a CEO peer advisory board or executive peer advisory board, or or in the case of a portfolio or fractional peer advisory board, we're in service of 12 to 15 different members and therefore different, you know, companies or, or business businesses in particular. Um, yeah, what, what else? Uh, what else said should we mention? Um, I, I I think we have mentioned most of it. I think the other thing that I that really struck struck me about what Ref is doing and what we are now doing in the Portfolio Peer Forum 
is this is a really holistic and without without getting too woo woo uh, about it it's a holistic way of managing your uh, portfolio and fractional life not just your business but looking after your personal growth your professional growth and your business growth and if you can imagine that venn diagram of bringing together to the center all of those things aligning yourself and getting away from this frustration that I think a lot of uh, fractional executives, portfolio professionals feel, especially when they first get going, is, should I really go be going back to a job, a real job? No, it is a real job that we do. Um, and that is a fundamental um, anecdote we have in portfolio peer forums that we try and sort this out. This, this, this is a real job being a portfolio professional. It is a real job being a fractional. It's not, it's not different. It, it, sorry, it is different, but it's um, certainly not the corporate job you left. So don't redesign yourself back into a corporate job is what we often say. Uh, yeah. Barry. And I see, I see, um, I see another sorry. question in the chat. Is this, I guess this is at least from Gary by the looks of it. It's another common question we get asked a lot, Gary, in particular, you know, when I'm running physical forums um, in San Diego, I'm, a, I'm an equity partner in REF San Diego. I have a role with REF USA, helping our USA wide expansion. We just opened in Miami, for instance, and, and with REF Global as well, hoping our, helping our global expansion. We just opened in London. Um, but I run I run physical forums in San Diego and, and, and right here in my backyard and also up in LA. And our forums are half a day. And um, members will often ask that question. Well, you know, if we process one or two issues a month, does that mean that every six to 12 months I get to process an issue? Um, and uh, it doesn't work like that. We process issues on the basis of priority. So it isn't like it's your turn. Uh, and, and therefore, you've got to wait six or 12 months. Uh, we process on the basis of priority and magically what happens is you get used to um, how we process issues so in many cases you self-process the issue you know, i know what the group's going to ask me i know what they're going to tell me sort of you self-process issues and it all plays out nicely and works out beautifully and then we make sure that you know stuff happens in between times uh, uh, and we spin out tiger teams if we need to. And yes, we, we get people to look at performance, um, uh, uh, you know, quarterly, annually. We will share data. We will show graphs and all of that kind of stuff. And that's not where the problems are. The problems are at the base of the, of the iceberg. Uh, it, it, the problems are not up here, or, or rather the, the, those are the symptoms of the problems, but the real problems are down here. And so it's that deep work uh, and and creating the safety of the space to get beneath the surface of the analytical stuff. Obviously, everything needs to play back to that, and you'll see you'll see the inflection points showing up in that. Uh, but the root the root problems are down here. And and indeed, I love to talk about the concept of a hall of mirrors. Every time we ask a question of another member during a case, we're really asking it of ourselves. Every time we give input to another member in their case, we're really giving it to ourselves. And what's happening is all of these questions and insights are bouncing around this hall of mirrors and they're landing on everybody. And so the most powerful thing that we, that we, that we do when we, when we um, have new members in the room uh, is we'll ask the member that brought the case, you know, how was that valuable for you? Oh my gosh, you know, I wish I had it five years ago. But then the next question is we turn to everybody else in the room. And that's what I did uh, two months ago when that lady said, I wish I had this five years ago. I then turned to everybody else in the room and I asked them, well, we processed her issue, a very specific issue that she had. And we gave her great input. And she's taking away a huge amount of value. But what value are you taking away that's relevant to you back at your ranch from processing her issue? Half the hands go up in the room. Oh, I, I realize I need to be asking myself that question. I realize if I'm not careful, that could be me in her situation. How do I prevent it? That was me five years ago. Um, 
So, so you get this sort of effect of all this stuff is bouncing around in this hall of mirrors and landing on everybody. So it's not like you only get value when you bring your own case. You get value from processing everybody's case all the time in some way, shape, or form. Uh, Barry, what else can we, or Zed, what else can we <laughs> answer, or, or can we open it up and... Uh, you mind if I, could, I just uh, one one thing that I'm I'm keen to yeah. make sure we do get out is these tasters. Um, yeah. Like obviously, um, thanks for uh, explaining it in detail um, for everyone. But the tasters that you're you're yeah. going to offer to run. You want to share that, uh, Zed? You want to share that slide? Yep, right away. Can you see that? Yep. So do you want me to just walk that through, um, Barry? Yes, please, mate. Um, yeah. So, so the idea here, as I mentioned earlier on, is as is, and and you have a barcode there uh, to um, download uh, the the information. But the 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 fact is, it's very hard to describe um, exactly what goes on. Despite the fact we we've, we've tried to do that today, we invite you to um, take the opportunity of attending one of these uh, taster sessions. Uh, there is no fee. That is there to, um, if you like, mimic as closely as possible what it might be like to 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 attend um, a peer forum. Um, it is um, <clears throat> monthly for two hours, as we said, but this is a one off uh, on any one of those dates. Do sign up on the Eventbrite uh, invitation link that you'll see. And attending a taster session actually for us is a prerequisite to attempt to to apply to be a member of a forum uh, we ask that people join uh, the taster and certainly straight after that taster if they are interested we're not in a position to sell anything this is too big an investment in your own life for us to be there trying to cajole you to do it it must feel right for you and therefore we invite you also to attend a one-to-one -one with mike or myself to discuss what it is feeling like uh, for you. And if we then mutually sense it's the right thing to do, all we have to do then is make sure that this prospective member uh, is coming into a group where they are, they are going to fit uh, both in terms of the non-conflict and also in terms of their personality and, and character. And I, I, also put the link, I also put the link in the chat for you all, so. Thanks, Mike. 